Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Certainly pleased to have everybody here in attendance, as well as uh, those folks watching at home. Good to have you. It is Wednesday, May 2nd, and we want to introduce you to your City Council. Council Member Starr? Here. Staley? Erickson? Here. Erpenbach? Here. Kylie? Here. Neitzert? Here. Rolfing? Here. Selberg? Here. Councilors, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. In our great city, we start our City Council meetings with an invocation. And I, to my left, wasn't expecting him here, but I'm sure glad he's here. He's a, he's a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Jeff Agater. And uh, Jeff uh, and I used to work together in the olden days, and now he's uh, part of a really wonderful organization that's right across the street from uh, your City Council. And it's called the Direct Line Prayer uh, Center. And um, there's a number of folks here with the Direct Line. Certainly glad they're here. Uh, they pray not only for this mayor, they pray for these counselors, and they pray for all of you, and they do it every day. Uh, and so we're just really, really blessed to have you here, Jeff. So let's stand for the invocation that Jeff is going to give us, and then please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Jeff? Please join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, who makes it possible for us to have a relationship with you to recognize your majesty and glory, to bring our cares and concerns to you, to receive insight and wisdom when we don't know what to do, and to ask that your ways be done here on earth. As we consider the theme of unity for the National Day of Prayer tomorrow, Lord, we're reminded of the charge that you give us in Ephesians 4.3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Lord, help us each to make every effort as we humble ourselves toward one another. Allow your love to guide our motives and relationships. Give us the capacity to love beyond our immediate circle of family and friends and to extend grace to those with whom we differ. Lord, bring unity and peace to our families. Strengthen the commitment between husbands and wives. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the children's hearts to their parents. Help them make every effort to build trust and mutual respect with each other. Unify our city, Lord. Give us clarity of purpose and unity heart for the work ahead. Empower our leaders to make every effort to foster cooperation among our mayor, city council members, civic leaders, and citizens across our community. Father, we need you to achieve true unity in our lives. Change our hearts, Lord. Give us the courage to become vulnerable so that we can open our lives to others in order to cultivate unity. Lastly, Father, I want to lift our Mayor Mike Huther to you this evening as he finishes his term in office in the coming weeks. Thank you for allowing him to lead us so well these past eight years and for the unique ways that you have gifted him. We ask that you would bless him now as he transitions to what you have in store for him next. Give him grace, peace, strength, and hope. And may he sense the closeness that he has with you, and may it sustain him in the days ahead. We ask all these things in the wonderful and powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Well, good evening, everybody. Let's continue this, uh, this journey involving prayer. And would the direct line person or team come on up as well? You weren't planning on it? You're coming up. <laughs> Jeffrey, so good to have you here, too. Jeff, would you just introduce uh, the direct line uh, prayer team? I'd be happy to. Uh, Dorothy Terhorst, Lori Peterson, Jeannie Omlin, uh, Susie Wingler, and the cute one on the end is my wife, Becky. <laughs> How many years, buddy? 36. 36. <laughs> 30, 35, 32 for me. Awesome. All right, buddy. 
Well, here we go. Uh, the first proclamation, and, and it's, a, it's a great one. The proclamation reads, Whereas the 67th observance of the National Day of Prayer will be held on Thursday, May 3rd, with the theme, Pray for America, Unity. Based on Ephesians 4, 3, which challenges believers to mobilize unified public prayer for America. Whereas the National Day of Prayer has been part of our national heritage since it was declared by the First Continental Congress in 1775 and the United States Congress in 1952, approved as a joint resolution, in quotes, that the president shall set aside and proclaim a suitable day each year other than a Sunday as a national day of prayer on which the people of the United States may turn to God in prayer and meditation at churches, in groups, and as individuals. Whereas the United States Congress in 1988 by public law 100-307 as amended establishes, in quotes, an act to provide for setting aside the first Thursday in May as the day on which the National Day of Prayer is celebrated. Whereas leaders and citizens of our communities, cities, states, and nation are afforded the privilege of prayer with the joy of seeking divine guidance, strength, protection, and comfort from Almighty God. Whereas recognizing the love of God, we, citizens of Sioux Falls, treasure the freedom to gather in prayer, exercising reliance on God's power in the face of present challenges and threats, asking for his blessing on every individual of our city. Now, therefore, I'm Mike Huther, mayor of the city of Sioux Falls, do hereby proclaim May 3rd, 2018, as Day of Prayer in Sioux Falls. God bless you all. Thank you for being here. Let's give them a round of applause. In another special proclamation as well, uh, Jody, Michael, please come forward. And you want to bring the entire team? Yes. We'd love it. Come on up. Love the enthusiasm. Here we go. Here we go. Great, great. Come on in. Uh, Michael, Jody, who, do you want to introduce? Who do you want to introduce everybody? Should we try, or what do you want to do? We're just going to say this is Paul, Mary, and Mike. Listen, we are just a, a advocacy group here in Sioux Falls, riding our bikes on the streets. Great. And just quickly, how do you join your organization? Mike, we can get you signed up tonight. <laughs> I know you. I tell the people of Sioux Falls how you can join your organization. I love your enthusiasm, though. You can go to fallsareabicyclists.org and sign up that way. Very good. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Come on, young people. Ready? Here we go. The proclamation reads, whereas the bicycle is an economical, healthy, convenient, and environmentally sound form of transportation, and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of our city's scenic beauty. Whereas throughout the month of May, residents of Sioux Falls and our visitors will experience the joys of bicycling through education programs, community events, or by simply getting out and going for a ride. Whereas the Sioux Falls bike trail system attracts bicyclists each year, providing economic, health, transportation, and yes, tourism benefits. Whereas creating a bicycle-friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health, well-being, quality of life, attracts tourism dollars, improves traffic safety, supports student learning outcomes, and reduces pollution, congestion, and wear and tear on our streets and on our roads. Whereas Falls Area Bicyclists, Live Well Sioux Falls, and League of American Bicyclists, and other businesses and community groups will pr be promoting bicycling through the month of May, whereas these groups are also promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety education in an effort to reduce collisions, injuries, and fatalities, and improve health and safety for everyone on the road. Now, therefore, I, Mike Huther, Mayor of the City of Sioux Falls, do hereby proclaim May as Bike Month in Sioux Falls and urge all residents to join me in this special observance and take an opportunity to, to get out and Ride our bicycles. And ride. Let's go. Thank you, everybody.
Council, thank you for that opportunity. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, we'll now move to our consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, Council I'd Star. like to uh, remove one item for multimedia support. Um, it's on the almost the bottom of the second page of okay. contracts. Thank you, Council Starr. Uh, any others? Can I get a motion to approve the other items? So move, Starr. Second or motion. Councilor Starr has made that motion, seconded by Councilor Erpenbach. You need a second to vote? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Uh, all in favor say, oh no, a roll call vote, please, sorry. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That has passed seven to zero. Thank you. Our regular agenda tonight, any changes to that? Move to approve Erickson. Second. Council Vice Chair Erickson made a motion to approve our agenda tonight. Seconded by Council Chair Kylie. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Staley? Oh, I'm sorry. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That has passed seven to zero. Thank you. Folks, welcome. Good to have you here tonight. We appreciate it. If there's anybody who wants to engage the council, just come forward. Uh, we'd ask you to keep your comments to five minutes or less. Engage the body as a whole, please, and just introduce yourself to the people of our town. Anybody interested in doing that? David, welcome. Greetings. <clears throat> I'm Davis Okaitis, and, and ever so conveniently, I happen to have a little chat about the bike trail. Happened to occur on the day that the mayor gave us a nice bike proclamation. So I happen to think our the city's bike trail is just marvelous. It's really pretty, helps us enjoy nature, get some exercise, improve our health and vitality. It's a good way to get around town. I think it's just one of the best things in Sioux Falls. But um, if you want to use it for transportation, you've got a 10 o'clock curfew. The roads are normally open around the clock, but our bike trail is in the city parks, and the city parks close at uh, 10 o'clock. So if you look at city ordinance 95.024, it says that you can't be in the park after 10 o'clock, and if you're on the bike trail, you're in the park, so I think we should update the hours that the bike trail is open so that we can use it at night. Now, sometimes people tell me that I should ride my bike on the shoulder, and I have found that shoulders in general, they're kind of bumpy, they're full of gravel. And if I had a slow mountain bike, you know, it might be all right, but I ride a fast road bike, and shoulders aren't very good because they're kind of bumpy and gravelly, and if the city would change that, then it'd be a safer spot to ride. My favorite part of the bike trail is that little squared corner up there by Rice Street. It's nice and secluded and, oh, it's just wonderful. Last year, I wrote to the Parks Department and said, we've got some sediment coming down the, from the gully, and I asked them to put a little dam there, and they did. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, took, I think it took them two tries to get it right. They tried to wood first and then the rock second, but it works now. Cool. Now, it's down there a couple weeks ago. I had a nice rainstorm. You can see there's all kind of silt on there again. So it looks like the parks department needs to do some more work. There's this ineffective silt dam over there, and I wrote to these guys and said, how about putting another one up over there? Better silt dam. Turns out that that's actually in their spring plan. So I guess the parks department's going to fix this problem. Nice of them to do that. The access to this part of the bike trail is a little muddy, after a rain anyway. And I happen to like projects and doing things. And I've got this truck, and I've got a shovel, and I'm volunteering to deliver gravel to this section of the levee. But I need a permit. You've got to read a little sign there that says, wheeled motor vehicles not permitted. I don't want to get a $100 fine. <clears throat> so if you could all convince the streets department to get me a permit, I'll deliver some gravel. A ton or two. It'd be fun. 
I wrote to the parks department and said, uh, this thing needs to go, and magically it disappeared. Dead sign there, we don't need it, fell over. There's a dead sign over there, gonna contact the streets department, said, take it away please, make the word a little better. Oh, and as always, you know, we should enjoy nature. I took this shot at uh, Lake Vermilion Campground over the weekend, I mean, the kids bike there, it's a great trip. And with that, I bid everybody a good evening. David, thank you for your stewardship. We appreciate it. Folks, anybody else? Anybody else? Welcome. Hello again, Stephen Siano. Uh, may as well talk about bicycles. I broke my neck riding a bicycle, got hit by a car uh, years ago, and uh, my health has gone downhill since, and I have recently gotten a motorized bicycle, which I intend on getting on, but I'm afraid of automobiles, understandably. <laughs> um, you're looking to increase uh, motor vehicle activity downtown, it seems, rather than improve the public transportation system and access for bicycles. I think that this should be re reconsidered. Uh, we don't need a parking ramp, another parking ramp. We don't need more cars downtown. As a matter of fact, if I had my way, I would limit, I would either ban cars almost entirely to do uh, a downtown area, or I would limit the speed that they travel in certain areas uh, really significantly so that it is actually comparable to that of uh, bicycle transportation, which would thus encourage bicyclists to, uh, to use that mode of transportation as opposed to the advantage that's obvious through the extreme uh, power and speed of uh, the internal combustion engine um, vehicles, which also supports a very harmful and detrimental to our world uh, system, the oil industry. We need to recognize um, we are destroying the earth around us and, we des and we're destroying our fellow person as your actions have harmed me and many others in your inaction, as I've said before. I wanna say also about your, uh, your uh, invocation, prayer, um, your flag prayer ritual, which I quit at 10 years old uh, because I went into church and I, then I came into uh, school and I saw the same thing happening. Well, what's this about? And well, I find that it was written by somebody named, uh, well, the flag prayer was, uh, I know, it's not called a prayer, just like, an, well, an invocation or whatever is not quite a prayer. Well, to me it is. Um, the flag that you have back there is bordered in gold fringe. I suggest you look that up. It is not our country's flag. It is not for free and equal people. Uh, and uh, also, religion has caused a lot of harm to me because I dropped out of uh, religion and then I studied religion. Where did it come from? This Christian, well, wherever you go in the world, there's perhaps a different religion that's the primary system. It's a political system, certainly it's political, and uh, many are imperial, and the Christian, which is primary here, does not follow that um, rabbi known as Jesus, uh, and this can be shown, just Google it, Jesus against Christianity, whatever, you can find out for yourself. And also there's been so much, uh, the Christians, when it was created in the fourth century by Emperor Constantine, it's a, a politician, uh, it, it destroyed groups that followed Jesus in different ways or didn't follow Jesus Jesus's path at all. 
So we need to recognize where we get things from. And I recommend, like Jesus, for instance, said, go in the closet and pray. And he, th he says, they will be heard for, uh, well, they think they will be heard for their many words. Well, they have their, their reward. Yeah, the answers await all of you. Thank you. Stephen, thank you. Sir, welcome. Hello, I'm Carlton Retzlaff, and I'd like to thank you all for your service. I know a few of you, it'll be over pretty quick, and I hope you can all uh, welcome your new members. So I just want to thank you. Carlton, Carlton, thank you very much. I, I, we appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Very good. Uh, Councilor Starr, uh, you had an item on uh, multimedia support, sir. Yes, and I, I'm going to start with a motion. I'm going to move to defer until May, the May 8th meeting. I will second that. I've got a motion to defer this item until the May 8th uh, meeting has been seconded. Councilor Starr? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. One of the things that we've uh, uh, been working on over the course of the last week of taking a look at this and trying to review what the changes will be the amount of money that we're investing. It's a $290,000 investment of an update of the equipment in the building. So I've uh, worked with Director uh, Kwanbeck Atten, and they are agreed to come next week for an informational meeting to walk us through it. It includes the security as well as the video, and I think that uh, I know I have some more questions that will be more in-depth than probably appropriate to go through at this meeting. So an informational is exactly what the intent of that is. So um, hopefully we can uh, defer this and, uh, and take a look and uh, spend a little bit more time so we can understand exactly what's going on. Very good, Councilor Starr. Thank you. Uh, there's been a motion to defer this item. It has been seconded. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That has passed 7 to 0. Thank you. Item 22. Item 22 is deferred from the City Council meeting of Tuesday, April 17, 2018. Uh, item one, entertainment venue, Sioux Falls Stadium Improvements, Professional Services Agreement, Walker Consultants, 67,500. Item 23 is a new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license from Ashna LLC, Extra Time Sports Bar, 4719 East Arrowhead Parkway, with conditional use permit 8209-2018 being approved on April 4th, 2018, pending permit issuance and final inspections per fire, health, and building services. Item 24 is a new 2018 retail wine license for Ashna LLC Extra Time Sports Bar, 4719 East Arrowhead Parkway with conditional use permit 8209-2018 being approved on April 4th, 2018. Pending permit issuance and final inspections per fire, health, and building services. Item 25 is a new 2018-19 retail malt beverage license for Urban Chislik LLC, Urban Chislik 441 West 85th Street, full service restaurant, CUP not required. Pending permit issuance and final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 26 is a new 2018 retail wine license for Urban Chislik LLC, Urban Chislik 441 West 85th Street, full service restaurant, CUP not required. Pending permit issuance and final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 27 is a new 2017 18 retail malt beverage license for La Labella Restaurants LLC. La Labella Restaurant 200 South Kiwanis Avenue, full service restaurant, CUP not required. Pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 28 is renewal of 2018 19 retail malt beverage license for La Labella Restaurant LLC. La Labella Restaurant 200 South Kiwanis Avenue. Pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 29 is new 2018 retail wine license for Lalabella Restaurants, LLC. Lalabella Restaurant, 200 South Kiwanis Avenue, pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 30 is a new 2018 retail wine license for Heinemann Hospitality Court, Looks Meat Market, 6213 Old Village Place. CUP not required. This is in addition to an existing license. Item 31 is a new 2018 retail wine license for Wine Time on Main LLC, Wine Time on Main, 330 South Main Avenue, CUP not required. Item 32 is new 2018-19 retail malt beverage license for Granite City Restaurant Operations Incorporated, Granite City Food and Brewery, 
2620 South Louise Avenue, CUP not required. This is in addition to an existing license. Item 33 is transfer of 2018 retail liquor license from Speakeasy LLC, Speakeasy LLC, 130 South Phillip Avenues to T. Slat Incorporated, JJ's Wine, Spirit and Cigars, 3000 West 57th Street with conditional use permit 6910-2017 being approved on July 5th, 2017 with the effective date of the transfer being June 1st, 2018 or upon completion of building construction pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 34 is a transfer of 2018 package liquor license from T. Slat Incorporated JJ's Wine, Spirits and Cigars, 4810 Southwestern Avenue to T. Slat Incorporated JJ's Wine, Spirits and Cigars, 3000 West 57th Street with conditional use permit 6910-2017 being approved on July 5th, 2017 and with the effective date of the transfer being June 1st, 2018 or upon completion of building construction pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 35 is a special one-day malt beverage license for a zoological society of Sioux Falls, Great Plains Zoo and Delbridge Museum of Natural History, 805 South Kiwanis Avenue, for a special event on May 21st, 2018. Item 36 is a special one-day liquor licenses for Great Bear Recreation Park, Incorporated Great Bear Recreation Park, 5901 East Rice Street for wedding receptions on May 19th, June 2nd, July 28th, and October 12th, 2018. Thanks so much. Great job, uh, Jamie. Good evening, Jamie Palmer with licensing. Um, I can't speak to item 22, but item 23 and 24 are um, a beer and wine request for a new establishment. The applicant is here if you would have questions for him. Items 25 and 26 are a new um, dining establishment that also are requesting beer and wine. Um, 27, 28, and 29 are all for the same location. Um, they would for beer and wine, and then the renewal with the beer license goes with that. Um, item 30 is a request for a wine license. This um, particular applicant currently holds a retail malt um, beverage license at this location and just wishes to add wine. Um, 31 is a new business that will be located in the Washington Square building. And item 32 is a request for a new malt beverage license to be able to sell growlers. And item 33 and 34 is a transfer. This particular business is just moving locations. And item 35 and 36 are special one day requests that have met the state law requirements. Thank you, thank you. Council, did you have any questions on item uh, 22? Anybody? Uh, yeah. All right, Councilor Starr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, we did uh, spend some time uh, last week uh, going over the report uh, from their consultant group, taking a look at the uh, stadium. I guess I wanted to make, well, I had a question about uh, how we're moving forward, but I guess the statement that I wanted to make first was that we're making a decision by moving this forward that we're going to continue to put the stadium together and do the repairs. Um, you know, it's a half a million dollars by the time we're done to do sidewalk repairs and seals, um, sealing things up and, and continuing that on. Uh, the consultant did say that at some point that it, it would make sense that uh, that could be parking slash hotel space and some of the things that we look at in, in doing that. And I'm certainly not heading that project up tonight for sure. So, um, and I know there's been a lot of talk about where um, a future stadium would go if that's something that we did and I think that's uh, part of the vision that this council is going to have to do and the vision that goes with that um, as we go forward. The only question that I had um, for this evening though for uh, the administration is I don't believe this includes the design work that we put in the capital improvement plan um, for the locker rooms and I was wondering if that is going to uh, continue in a simple uh, a different contract or if we were still moving ahead with that as part of the the CIP uh, Councilor Neisser excuse me I, I just happened to an, uh, ask director Turback that very question a few days ago and the answer was this is purely for foundational and structural work the locker room is not included in this and at this time they're not moving forward with the locker room this is purely the structural issues that need to be addressed this is no and, and I under Excuse me, hmm. man. Um, um, but the question was, are we continuing with it in 18? No. Or are we, we're just going to let that, the <laughs> locker rooms that were vital to the success of the stadium, we're going to let that drop. So, statement, sorry. Okay. It wasn't I, a question. I, I would just, I would say for, for my part,
reading the report and just kind of sensing the community, I, I don't think this uh, ballpark is going anywhere anytime soon. And absent a angel investor, I don't think you're going to see a new ballpark anywhere at, in, in the near future. So I have no problem moving this forward. Second, Erickson. There's been a motion to move uh, to um, uh, approve item 22, seconded as well. Uh, a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Hey, yes, Councilmember. Sorry. I'll move um, items 22 through 36. 23. 23 through Sorry, 36. 23 through 36. Thank you. Second, Rolfing. And has been seconded. A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 37. Item 37 is deferred from the City Council meeting of Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018. Second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances for Chapter 156, Floodplain Management. Planning Commission recommends approval 6 to 0. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Okay. Jeffrey Schmidt representing planning staff on a few e uh, items this evening. The city does have a floodplain management ordinance. Uh, it is to protect the citizens of Sioux Falls as well as this, um, the ordinances for uh, floodplain and flood prone areas. Uh, methods to do that is to restrict per certain uses in this area and to make sure that we're always looking at areas on how we protect those certain things. Uh, when a area is going to be developed or look to be developed, we require a floodplain permit and we review it for these certain issues. Um, and then at that point, we make determinations on how they can address their floodplain aspects. Specifically in non-residential construction is a lot of the issues we have to deal with. Non-residential is non-homes, um, so commercial office, uh, parks, those types of things, and those structures currently have to be above the floodplain and be open to having, if they're going to be in the floodplain, having water flow through them. The ordinance amendment that this is addressing is for non-residential structures, uninhabitable structures, specifically accessory structures. So we are going to be allowing variances in these types of structures where they do not impact upstream or downstream parcels. And at the same time, as long as they represent a low cost in potential damage, as well as any low impacts to public expense. For example, specifically, any public restrooms and public parks, if they don't impact upstream or downstream, and if they don't have potential damage to them, then we would be allowed to do these as the new ordinance would be if this gets passed this evening. That's the change. Jeffrey, thank you, folks. This is a second reading. Did anybody want to speak about this item to the council? Councilors? Councilor Neitzert? I just had one minor question. There was another, uh, looks like a, almost a housekeeping item that had to do with flood proofing. Yes. And there was a slight word change. What, what was the intent of that word change? Um, to make sure that we're allowing flood proofing to the city of Sioux Falls. It was just a, uh, it was a double negative in the ordinance and flood proofing is to make sure that you can allow somebody to protect their home, flood proof it or their structure or their accessory unit and flood proof it. What that basically requires them to do for this example here is what type of building materials it is, how do you protect it, and that is called flood proofing it. So it's allowed but not encouraged now? Is Correct. that the idea? Yes. Okay. So, thanks. and before it was discouraged and not allowed, it's allowed, but again, we don't encourage it because, again, is it really low cost and is it really helping with public expenses? Okay, thanks. I would move approval. Rolfing. Second, Selberg. Councilor Rolfing has made that motion to approve this item. Second by Councilor Selberg. A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That has passed 7 0. Item 38. Item 38 is deferred from the City Council meeting of Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018. Second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 160, Zoning Subchapter, On-Premises Sign Regulations. Planning Commission recommends approval 6-0. to zero. Signage is an 
incredibly complex issue in America, in the city of Sioux Falls in South Dakota. This was an informational item that we held with city council back in March 6th. We've had planning commission items on this, um, as well as first reading. And we had a small study group where we talked about this with any stakeholders. The issue we're trying to address as planning staff is to address the Supreme Court ruling in Reed versus Gilbert, which really has to do with temporary signs and content. The issue is, here it is, in Gilbert, Arizona, temporary signs and the church where they put these temporary signs up in the boulevard and they claimed discrimination and they won, but it was a dissenting opinion. In the end, what the court rules is how do you look or do not look at signs? In the end, as I've highlighted here, you, as an enforcement agency, you can address time, place, and manner, or when, where, and how, but that's all they really try to make sure you address. Don't look at what the signs say, because that's discrimination and content-based, but if you can regulate when a sign is up, where it's located on the property, and how, what type of sign it is, then you can regulate it. So sometimes the PowerPoints don't show up as well. But again, so this sign is in the, it's outside of the boulevard. The time period's temporary, and it is a portable sign. So when, where, and how. The signs are being addressed in this amendment by changing changeable signs, amending changeable signs. Um, we're not gonna call them automobile service station signs anymore, and we're not gonna call them menu sign drive-throughs anymore, but throughout any of the amendments that you're seeing today, we're not addressing any of the square footage or really the locations. We're really trying to address how they're labeled. So that addresses in staff's opinion how they're being enforced through the Supreme Court ruling. But again, it's very complex. Um, the current ordinance already in the zoning ordinance since 2009 addresses what a non-commercial message is and what a commercial message is. And that's what you see in front of you now. A non-commercial message is all these things, including political and religious signs. And a commercial message addresses commodity services, businesses, so current ordinances state you can have a construction sign, which would be a commercial message, or a political campaign sign, which is a non-commercial message. And again, I'm not changing the square footage, but here's the proposed amendment. Any yard signs, any non-commercial yard signs, and look at these examples, in a residential area, you can still have nine square feet, and in a non-residential, you can still continue to have 32 square feet for a non-commercial yard sign. For commercial signs, again, not changing the square footage at all. This is the same it is today. But in a uh, residential area, you can continue to have your 32 square foot sign. And in a non-residential area, an office area, business area, industrial area, you could have a 100 square foot sign. So that's how we're trying to address it is by labeling them now as non-commercial <coughs> signs or commercial signs, but not looking at labeling them some other way. So the other change that we've done is per council suggestion and in, in past history, we're addressing the electronic message signs, which are these dactronic signs that you see throughout Sioux Falls and how we've regulated them uh, as conditional uses now. Uh, we'll be able to look at the time um, look at how much signage they are and making sure that they're monuments. So time, place, and manner. That's my amendments. Jeffrey, thank you. Folks, a second reading. Did anybody want to engage the council on this topic? Councilors? Move, move to approve. Second night, sir. There's been a motion to approve this item. Second it as well. A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0, item 39. Item 39 is the second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 160, Zoning Subchapter Parking Regula Regulations. Planning Commission recommends approval 5 to 0. 
This is the third large ordinance amendment that we have this evening. Um, this is addressing motor vehicle sales. This is not for retail areas, specifically just motor vehicle sales. And what we're trying to address is again, protecting the residential areas and um, lessening some of the standards in non-residential areas. So again, in the overview, uh, retail standards for like a retail three, if you're abutting single family and you're a commercial motor vehicle sales lot, then you're greater than an acre and close to single family, you have to hard surface the lot and divide your parking lot and have the landscaping and have the 45 foot parking lots. If you're not close to single family, if you're away from single family in a commercial area, you still have to hard surface, but we would not require you to uh, have the landscaping within your motor vehicle sales lot. In a retail shopping center, you still do. And my clarification there as I've continued to talk is um, at a retail area, people come in and park in your lot. And so we kind of try to have them direct. But in a motor vehicle sales lot, they park their cars. So we don't need the breakups. So the other really large parking lots, same example. Um, the one on the left, that's the billion lot at 41st in Minnesota, what came through you. So we're using the standards that we are putting in place. It's a budding single family. They have to divide up the lots. They have to do the buffer yards adjacent to single family, have the berms, have the additional. However, on the one on the right, if it's the Vern ID down on 59th and Louise or on West 12th Street, if they're not near single family at all, you don't have to have the landscaping in the middle of your parking lot um, for a motor vehicle sales lot. And so we're trying to address the different standards. Jeffrey, thank you. Folks, uh, second reading. Anybody want to engage the council on this topic? Thank you. Council? Move approval. Second. Councilor Silver has made that motion to approve this item. Second by Council Chair Kiley. <coughs> a roll call, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 40. Item 40 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located east of North Cliff Avenue, north of East 29th Street North, and south of East 34th Street North, from the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban and RA1 Apartment Residential, Low Density Districts, to the RS Single Family Residential Suburban Districts, number 8170, 2018, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 5 to 0. Uh, Jason Bieber representing Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an application by the City of Sioux Falls Planning Department. Uh, the owners are, ex are 14 existing property owners up in the Norton Acres area. Uh, it's located in the northeast portion of the city, east of Cliff and west of I-229. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is these uh, single family residential property owners are looking uh, to match the zoning with their current single family use. Jason, thank you. Second reading, folks. Anybody want to address the council? Councilors? Move approval, Rolfing. Second. It's been a motion to approve. It has been seconded. Councilor Starr, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, want to thank you, Jason. This was uh, something that uh, you were able to put together with the neighbors and that they were concerned. And I know you put a lot of time into explaining to people the change and why things were there. We had a public meeting where we had the neighborhood get together, and it just, this is the way it's supposed to work. I mean, it just, uh, getting people the, the requests that they needed and uh, letting them be heard and understand exactly what's going on. So thank you in the department. Yeah, and I would just like to also thank the neighbors up there. They did a lot of the legwork. We kind of just handled the maps and stuff, so. And you answered a lot of questions. So, Councilor Starr, thank, thank you. you. A roll call, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 0. Thank you, Council. Item 41. Item 41 is a second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located north of West 12th Street and west of South Ellis Road from the AG Agricultural District to the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District, number 8173 2018, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval five to zero. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Jim Suka. Uh, it is located north of West 12th Street and west of South Ellis Road. Uh, just this would be the second phase of the Cherry Lake uh, uh, single family residential development. 
That's roughly 28.43 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is they're looking at constructing a single family residential neighborhood with roughly 22 lots. Thank you, Jason. Did anybody want to address the council on this item? Councilors? Move approval, ninth cert. Second, Rolfing. Councilor Nice has made a motion to approve this item. Second by Councilor Rolfing. A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. And it's passed 7 to 0. Thank you, Council Item 42. Item 42 is a second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located north of East 77th Street and east of South Cliff Avenue from the S2 Institutional Campus Planned Unit Development District to the RA3 Apartment <laughs> Residential High Density District number 81. 86 2018 and amending the official zoning map of the city of Sioux Falls Planning Commission recommends approval five to zero uh, The applicant here is Neil Singer. Uh, the owner is the University of Sioux Falls uh, It is located just south of the University of Sioux Falls football stadium uh, It is roughly 4.48 acres in size uh, The purpose of this rezoning is the applicant is looking at constructing a new uh, four-story 68 unit uh, senior living facility here Thank you, Jason. Anybody want to engage the council? Councilors? Move to approve, Erickson. Second, Selberg. Councilor Erickson has been a motion to approve. It has been seconded. Councilor Rolfing. Jason, is this, um, there's another apartment building going up right out there now. Is this north of that, between that and the, and the football stadium? Yep. The, the uh, apartment complex that you've seen gone up quite, uh, quite quickly is just to the south of 77th Street, just to the south of this property. Okay. And good luck for them. Thanks, Councilor Rolfing. Any roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Thank you, Council Item 43. Item 43 is a second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located south of West 69th Street and west of South Tallgrass Avenue from the S2 Institutional Campus Planned Unit Development and C4 Commercial Regional Districts to the S1 Gen General Institutional S2 Institutional Campus Plan Unit Development, C4 Commercial Regional CN Conservation and REC Recreation Districts, number 8201 to 2018, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 5 to 0. Uh, the applicant here is Sanford Health. Uh, it is located at the southwest corner of 69th Street and South Tallgrass Avenue. It's roughly 180 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is uh, they are looking at uh, platting off and then selling the middle portion there to the, for the future uh, Lutheran uh, High School. Thanks, Jason. Folks, anybody want to engage the council? Councilors? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Erickson. Councilor Rolfing has made a motion to approve item 43, seconded by Councilor Erickson. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Herpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 44. <clears throat> item 44 is a second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located at 309 South Joliet Avenue from the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District to the S1 General Institutional District number 8206 2018 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval 5 to 0. Uh, the applicant here is Eric Wilson. Uh, the owner is Marvin Tripp. Uh, it's located just north of East Arrowhead Parkway and west of, of South Foss Avenue. Uh, it's roughly 1.11 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is they are looking at constructing an indoor recreation facility, uh, which will include a climbing wall, uh, and then the building height would go over the, the allowable 35 feet in the current zoning district. Thanks, Chase. Anybody want to engage the council? Welcome, sir. My name is Marvin Tripp, and I greet you all. Trip. The land that we're looking at here has been in the Tripp name for over 105 years. My grandfather bought this for the city of Sioux Falls, got as far as Bonson Avenue. It originally was the grounds for, they wanted the state capital, and it's called the Capitol Hill edition out there. I just bring this as some of the, the background. Uh, times have changed, and better than raising cows and corn, 
It's better to have a facility where people can maintain their health and their fitness. Thank you for your consideration. Very good, Mr. Tripp. Thanks for um, uh, educating on this. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Councillors? Move to approve, Erickson. Second, Erpenbach. Councillor Erickson has made a motion to approve this item. Second by Councillor Erpenbach. A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Thank you, Mr. Tripp. Item 45. Item 45 is a second reading and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located south of West 69th Street and west of South Sundowner Avenue from the AG Agricultural District to the RS Single Family Residential Suburban, RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban, and CN Conservation Districts number 8212 2018 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 5 to 0. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Clint Ackerman with Signature Companies. Uh, it is located at the southwest corner of Sundowner and West 69th Street. Uh, it's roughly 67 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is the applicant is looking at constructing a future uh, twin home and single family residential development. Jason, thank you. Any comments uh, from the uh, audience? Very good. Councilor? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Erpenbach. Councilor Rolfing has made a motion to approve this item. Said my Councilor Erpenbach. A uh, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 46. Item 46 is a second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located at 196 and a half East 6th Street from the I-2 Heavy Industrial District to the DTPUD Downtown Planned Unit Development and REC Recreation Districts, number 82-13-2018, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 5-0. to zero. Uh, The applicant here is John Jacobson with Confluence. Uh, the owner is Sioux Steel and the City of Sioux Falls. Uh, it's located east of North Phillips Avenue and north of East 6th Street, just next to the Big Sioux River. Um, <coughs> It is roughly 11.6 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this is future redevelopment of the Sioux Steel site and uh, redevelopment of the existing Kiwanis Park there on the east side. Jason, thank you. Did anybody want to speak about this particular item from the audience? Council. Move to approve. Second. Uh, it has been a motion to approve. It has been seconded. Councilor Neisser, sir. Thank you. This is very exciting, but I am just curious as a matter of procedure, since this is being rezoned tonight to a DTPUD, going forward when they decide to do something, what, if any, public hearings are there in regards to what they're going to do and who hears those? Yep. Uh, once they, they go forward then with their plans, uh, they would have to go in front of the Planning Commission for Initial Development Plan Amendment to the Downtown Planned Unit Development. So there will be a public hearing for that. Okay, so the they, they have to they have to bring forward the initial development plan and the final development plan, like a yep, the initial just, development plan would go to planning commission, and, and then the final development plan would be administrative as part of their you know building okay, permits or right. whatever they decide to construct there. So great, thank you. This is very exciting. Mm -hmm. A roll call, please. Councilmember Starr. Yes. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach. Yes. Kylie. Yes. Neitzert. Yes. Rolfing. Yes. Selberg. Yes. That has passed seven to zero. Thank you, Council. We appreciate that. Item 47. Item 47 is to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, May 8th, 2018 at 7 o'clock p.m. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 51, Utility Rates and Charges, pertaining to water customers outside the City of Sioux Falls. All right, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Nick Borns. I'm Principal Engineer for uh, Water and Light and Power at the City of Sioux Falls. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about uh, properties along Ellis Road and uh, how they're affected by uh, the Ellis Road reconstruction project from 41st Street to uh, 12th Street um, and uh, the water service in particular. Um, as Sioux Falls grows, uh, we commonly um, have the need to reconstruct rural streets into multi-lane um, arterial streets. Uh, when we do that, it's common that we encroach other uh, privately owned utilities. Um, 
when this happens, it's very important for uh, um, the city of Sioux Falls uh, engineering staff to make sure that uh, uh, the proper coordination goes into these efforts. Um, and the ultimate goal is to try to minimize the impact that, uh, that this encroachment has. So I want to give you a little bit of background on this project. Um, the Ellis Road reconstruction project has initiated the need for either removal or replacement of uh, the water main owned by uh, Minnehaha Community Water Corporation or MCWC. Um, it's, uh, uh, I guess, the understanding between uh, MCWC and the city of Sioux Falls that as we continue to move to the west and encroach Ellis Road um, and that part of the city, that uh, the need for that MCWC water main is going to likely be temporary. Um, for that reason, in an, act, in an effort to uh, reduce taxpayer burden and uh, corridor congestion within the, um, the new Ellis Road corridor, um, we work together to try to come up with a solution to eliminate the need for the MCWC water main. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the coordination efforts that took place. Um, in 2017, uh, KLJ Engineering uh, is the uh, consultant for uh, the Ellis Road project from 41st Street to 12th Street. Um, and they determined that uh, the uh, MCWC water main would have to be removed um, as a part of the reconstruction of Ellis Road. Um, in January of 2018, city staff uh, worked with MCWC um, to try to devise a solution to uh, be able to eliminate the need for the uh, um, MCWC water main within that corridor. Um, we've got three different areas, I guess, that are affected by this project, um, and we've come up with three separate solutions for each of these areas. Um, area A is uh, just south of 22nd Street and includes four properties. Um, the, uh, uh, we're proposing incorporation of ordinance 51.054 uh, rates outside city limits as a solution uh, for this area. Um, that ordinance states that uh, the city shall provide water in city rates to residential users outside the city. Uh, we propose this solution for this area because uh, essentially we're eliminating um, their uh, water service by removing the MCWC water main. Uh, area B is located to uh, the south of 26th Street. This includes two properties. Uh, the, we are proposing uh, incorporation of ordinance 51.054, again, uh, the rates outside city limits, and ordinance 51.046, uh, which is residential inside city limits. Uh, this property is uh, surrounded by developed property within city limits. For that reason, um, we're able to initiate annexation for these properties. Um, so these properties uh, would be utilizing ordinance 51.054 until they're annexed in the city of Sioux Falls, which we're anticipating to be later in 2018. And at that point, ordinance 51.046 uh, residential inside city limits would be applicable. Uh, area C is uh, the area to the south and east of the intersection of 41st Street and Ellis Road. Uh, this is a sanitary sewer district for Prairie Meadows. Um, for this area, we are proposing incorporation of Ordinance 51.048, which is commercial inside city limits. Um, these properties would still be customers of MCWC. We would be selling uh, water to MCWC uh, at the commercial inside city limits rate uh, for them to redistribute to their customers in that situation. Um, and then in uh, March and April of 2018, uh, We've worked with uh, the project uh, team for the Ellis Road Reconstruction Project to be able to incorporate these changes into uh, the construction of Ellis Road. So I'd like to kind of summarize uh, the Ellis Road property uh, water service discussion. Um, and I guess the MCWC water main elimination has several advantages. Um, including avoiding water main redundancy within the corridor, uh, minimizing use of public funds for redundant water main. Um, we already have a busy corridor uh, that's proposed for Ellis Road with a lot of utilities. 
Um, eliminating one of the redundant uh, utilities is going to be an advantage for us. Um, and then we also have the ability to minimize the impacts of property owners. Um, and we can do this because um, when we take over the properties along Ellis Road, uh, MCWC will waive the uh, buyout fee. Um, when we take these over, typically uh, we would pay a buyout fee when we take over customers from MCWC. In this situation, they're gonna waive that fee and then we can pass that uh, savings on to the property owner by not charging them for uh, the new, the city water meter and the city water meter reader. Um, and essentially those costs are wash. Um, we also uh, uh, will able to, will be able to incorporate uh, uh, the Ellis Road project to provide temporary water during construction to these properties. Um, and then uh, uh, we'll be able to make the connections to these uh, water services as well during that project. Um, and then again, we've got uh, three separate areas and three separate solutions. So I've got a list of action items. Um, the request for tonight is uh, an amendment to ordinance 51.054. Um, by incorporating these six properties along Ellis Road, uh, area, including areas A and B, um, into Ordinance 51.054. Um, the other two uh, action items have to do with uh, the construction uh, pending uh, approval of incorporation of these properties into the ordinance. And with that, I'd like to take any questions if there are any. Okay, Councilors, any questions? Councilor Erpenbein. Yes, thank you, and thank for, for the presentation. I know it's complicated. Um, just two, just real quick questions. I understand Area C, and I, I know why we're not, why we're doing the way we're doing with that, but area, both Area A and Area B are surrounded by city limits properties now. Is there a reason why we're not going to try to annex Area A? It's only four properties, mm -hmm. correct? And yep. so I wonder if, so if, why is it different than Area B? The difference is uh, uh, area B is completely surrounded by uh, city limits, uh, developed city limits, and area A is not. So that's, that's why we can uh, um, move forward with the city-initiated annexation for area B. So area A, even though it appears on the map like it's surrounded. Yep. And actually, um, if, if you look at uh, um, the yellow line, Right, that, that, that western shows the city edge limits, isn't. And that yep. western edge isn't, yep. And that's the difference, and it's not, it's also not developed on that side. Okay. So it would have to be uh, surrounded and by developed city of Sioux Falls uh, for us to be able to initiate the annexation. Okay, great, thank you. Any other, Councilor Neitzer? Yeah, there are moving, a lot of moving parts to this, and as many people know, I'm only about 800 feet from Ellis Road, so I'm right near this, but so for, um, for, for area A and B, are, are you essentially going to just connect to their water service connection at the property line, just basically switching out the county with yours? So what we're going to do yours? is, uh, as a part of that uh, Ellis Road construction project, we were already planning on extending our water services to the property line and installing a curb stop. Um, and with this effort, uh, essentially whatever connection would need to be made on the property owner side would be taken care of by MCWC. So that was one of the, uh, I guess, agreements that was kind of worked out in our discussion with MCWC. Um, their responsibilities included making that connection and then also waiving that buyout fee was kind of um, the main uh, things they were able to provide for us, I guess, as a part of the solution. And so the main thrust of this is rather than um, reinstalling their their water main or their infrastructure literally for four properties because two are annexing later this year you mm -hmm. just get it all connected to city water and then it's just you're right. not wasting the money on doing that now uh, the one thing I guess I I, I maybe missed um, area C yep so you're gonna put in a, a bulk meter that's, so the water is gonna go through that bulk meter on the way in into there and then they're gonna have their, still have like a, their own little water system and have one bill that's apportioned however they do it. Is that yep. fair so to say? Basically, like uh, they do the sewer. For, for area C, elimination of that water main through that Ellis Road corridor would um, eliminate their service to the Prairie Meadows area uh, but we, all, we have water main in the area on 48th Street, which that's where they're going to connect on to us. So they're going to make the connection onto our water main. They're going to install uh, the, the bulk metering uh, structure. Um, basically, all the effort is 
taking place on their part, we're just gonna sell them the water and then they're gonna re redistribute it. So MCWC will be our customer and then in turn, they're gonna redistribute that water to their customers that they'll keep in the, the area C. Got it, I follow. They're buying our water, they're connecting to us. Okay. Yep. Good. Any other questions? Would anybody like to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, May 8th at 7 p.m.? So moved. Second, Erpenbach. Okay, we've had a motion by Councillor Rolfing, second by uh, Councillor Erpenbach. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. <clears throat> Item number 48. Item Thank number you. 48 is to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, May 8th, 2018 at seven o'clock. So first reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, authorizing the joint powers agreement with the City of T for use of the Sioux Falls Regional Wastewater System. Good evening, Council Chair and City Council. Trent Lubbers with the Office of Public Works. I have Mark Perry, our wastewater superintendent, uh, with me also to help answer questions. Uh, we reviewed the details of this contract uh, last week at informational, so I'll uh, just kind of review a couple of high points. Number one is uh, regionalization continues to work and be a great option for us to solve problems economically. Lewis and Clark, uh, our regional water system, our regional landfill, library, and now we're building a regional wastewater system. Um, we have other regional uh, wastewater customers. The City of Brandon, the Renner Sanitary District, uh, we just talked about the Prairie Meadow Sanitary District, they're all regional customers. And then currently we're also serving the City of Harrisburg under a contract, but they're not uh, under a regional contract. They haven't signed a long-term agreement. Um, T has studied uh, their wastewater solutions and regional wastewater uh, ends up being the most economical solution for them. So the agreement that we've negotiated, negotiated with the City of T incorporates the rates and charges that are set in our ordinance. Um, it's a 20-year agreement with two five-year renewals, uh, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? I would move to set uh, date of second reading for Tuesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Second, Selberg. Okay, motions have been made by Councilor Rolfing, seconded by Councilor Selberg. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Item number 49. Item 49 is to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, May 8th, 2018 at 7 p.m. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 124, Transportation Services Subchapter General Provisions, to allow cash tips to be accepted by transportation network company drivers. Mr. Chair? Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm bringing this forward and I'm just going to make a uh, kind of a summary presentation tonight and I'll go into more detail at the second reading. This uh, ordinance is really straightforward and simple. For the benefit of the public, a TNC or a transportation networking company is what you would call rideshare and in Sioux Falls that would include Lyft. The other major player in the nation is Uber. Uh, right now in our ordinance we do not allow those drivers to take cash tips. There's some historical reasons behind it, and I'll go into that in the second reading. It's very simple. It's going to allow them to take cash tips, um, and uh, I, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to move to set the second reading for Tuesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Second, Selbrick. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Neitzer. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Item number 50? Item 50 is to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, May 8, 2018 at 7 p.m. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 124, Transportation Services, Subchapter General Provisions to allow business decals or markings on passenger service vehicles. Councillor Neitzer? Thank you very much. Again, I'm gonna make a little summary presentation. I'll go into more detail at the second reading. In the city of Sioux Falls, we have vehicles for hire that includes a number of things like taxis. In this particular case, we are talking about passenger service vehicles, and those are vehicles that you can get a ride for a flat fee, and it's uh, by appointment. And so there's a handful of those companies in the city of Sioux Falls. For example, you might say, uh, can you pick me up at this particular time and take me to the airport and uh, it's a flat rate, $20. Um, and there's also a few party buses and things like that that will take you around the city. 
There's a prohibition that has been in place for a handful of years that says that they cannot have decals or markings on their vehicles. They must be unmarked. And again, there's some historical reasons for that. Um, the entry of Lyft into the market has really changed the entire goal, entire vehicle for hire um, industry. And I think this would be a good tool for them to have in their toolbox. This would allow them to have signage. It would not require it. And uh, we'll go into more detail at the second reading. And I'm going to move to set that second reading for Tuesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Second, Selberg. Okay. Again, thank you, Councillor Nicer. Councillor Selberg. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Item number 51. Item 51 is a resolution of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving the placement of a sculpture on public property. Good evening. Council members and the viewing Sioux Falls citizens, my name is Russ Sorensen with the City Planning Office representing this item this evening. This is a resolution for approving the temporary placement of a city-owned sculpture known as When Buffalo Roamed by artist Jerry McKellar from Washington. It's part of our Sculpture Walk program and it was selected by the citizens as the Pe People's Choice Award in 2017. This sculpture would be placed on public property in Van Epps Park. It depicts a single lifelike figure of a Native American man standing on rocks. And uh, the sculpture measures about six feet, 11 inches, and 30 inches in width, and 24 inches in length. This proposed temporary placement for this sculpture will be displayed on a quartzite pedestal with associated landscaping and lighting. And uh, at 300 North Minnesota Avenue at the north end of Van Epps Park. As part of the Van Epps Park redevelopment project, the City of Sioux Falls will be responsible for the project costs associated with the sculpture placement and installation, and it would also be included in the City's annual art conservation maintenance program as well. Both the Sioux Falls Visual Arts Commission and the Parks and Recreation Board have reviewed uh, this proposal, and they've recommended unanimous approval for this sculpture placement as presented. This concludes my report, unless there are questions. Thank you very much, Russ. Anybody have any questions? I would move approval. Second, Erpenbach. Okay, we've had a uh, motion has been made by Councillor Rolfing, seconded by Councillor Erpenbach. Uh, Russ, uh, that's a beautiful sculpture, and it's, it's a great place in our newly, soon to be, newly renovated park. Thank you, and I'd also like to thank the citizens of Sioux Falls for selecting this particular sculpture. And also, I'd like to plug Sculpture Walk. We'll be installing the sculptures this weekend on Saturday. Yep, very good. Thank you, Russ. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Item number 52? Item 52 is a resolution of the City of Sioux Falls approving the preliminary plan of Cherry Lake Reserve West Edition. Uh, this is the preliminary subdivision plan for Cherry Lake Reserve. Uh, this would go along with the rezoning that you heard at item 41. Uh, it's the applicant and owner's Jim Sukup. Uh, it is the second phase of the Cherry Lake uh, single family residential development. Uh, they are looking at subdividing this uh, to about 22 single family lots. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions, councilors? And we have a motion. Move to approve Erickson. Second, Rolfing. Okay, roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Ruffing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Item number 53. Item 53 is a resolution of the City of Sioux Falls approving the preliminary plan of Meadow Vista Edition. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Kelly Nielsen. Um, it is located uh, east of North La Mesa Drive and south of West 3rd Street. Um, it is roughly 22.1 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this preliminary subdivision plan is the applicant is looking at uh, constructing a future single family and twin home development with, rough, with roughly 94 lots. Okay. Very good. Councilors, any questions? Councilor Neitzer. Will there be an access? Is, is that really depicting what it looks like? Is that a, a road coming in off of La Mesa to get into that development? Yeah, there will be an access off of La Mesa on the northwest side of this development, and then they'll have an existing access to the development to the east also. Okay, so left too. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Anyone like to make a motion, please? So moved. Rolfing. 
second nicer. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Item number 54. Item 54 is a resolution of the City of Sioux Falls approving the preliminary plan of a Galway Village addition. Uh, this is a preliminary subdivision plan that goes along with item 45 that we heard this evening. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Clint Ackerman with Signature Companies. Uh, he, it is located southwest corner of 69th Street and South Sundowner Avenue. Uh, the applicant is looking at constructing uh, roughly 40 twin home lots adjacent to West 69th Street. Uh, then they will construct roughly 122 single family lots to the south of that. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, the resolution, anybody, any members from the public that wish to address this? Councilors? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Erpenbach. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Okay, item number 55. Item 55 is a resolution of the City of Sioux Falls approving the preliminary plan of Sanford Research Park addition. Uh, this is also a preliminary subdivision plan that went with our rezoning item this, uh, this uh, evening. Uh, the applicant here is Sanford Health. Uh, it's located at the southwest corner of 69th and Tallgrass Avenue. Uh, they're looking at subdividing roughly 180 acres uh, into roughly 40 lots for institutional and commercial uses. Uh, the main reason for this subdivision is they're looking at platting that center lot um, and then conveying it to the Lutheran School uh, for their new high school. Thank you. Do we have any members of the public that would like to address this? Councilors? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Erickson. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Item number 56. Item 56 is a resolution including certain contiguous territory within the corporate limits of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Annexation 8133-2018, 2001, and 1911 South Ellis Road. Council, Albert Schmidt with the representing Planning and Building Services. This is a petition to annexation by the two property owners who live on the sites. It's located just south of West 26th Street and on the west side of South Ellis Road, just south of Shenanigans. The uh, area is approximately 1.8 acres in total between the two properties. The area is currently sewerable, and there are no abutting non-annexed properties on this site. A rezoning will be done by the city on their behalf as part of the agreements in front of you to RS, which will be anticipated to be spring, summer of 2019. Um, and I'd also like to put a thank you to engineering and uh, MCWC for working together and um, actually really doing a good job on saving property owners in this area uh, over $1,000 each for getting rent redundancies and helping them out quite a bit. So they did a wonderful job. Uh, final note on this one is city staff would be asking for an amendment to this uh, for the resolution to set a specific date of November 30th, 2018 as the effective date. Thank you, Albert. Any members of the public that would like to address this? Okay, motions, Councilor Neitzer. Do, what, what is the significance of the November 30th? Does that have to do with project completion or something else entirely or? Uh, no, so typically, going a long explanation on your short question there. Um, typically when we try to work with property owners, we try to give them as much grace as possible with this, just trying to get them in. And so we try to get it after November just so tax reasons, it's very clear. This is in front of you today now because we wanted, with the water main going in, we wanted to get this in earlier rather than later. Otherwise, if the water main wasn't going in, I wouldn't even bother bringing it forward until later in the year. But since that's going in, we anticipate water installation this month or next month. We wanted to try to get the actual resolution, the agreements completed, so it showed that there was a commitment there to move forward and get the in-city rates and get everything going. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Will somebody make a motion to adopt the item? So moved. Hold. Uh, second, second. Nicer. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. I'd move to amend okay. um, this item by changing the final paragraph to read as follows. 
and that the city clerk shall cause to be filed with the Register of Deeds, Minnehaha County, South Dakota, a duly certified transcript of this resolution on November 30th, 2018. Second, Erpenbach. And Councillor Erpenbach seconded that. Thank you, Councillor Starr. Okay, a vote to amend. Roll call. Council vote, Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Now a vote to adopt as amended. Council vote. Member Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Okay. Item number 57. Item 57 is a resolution advising and giving consent to the appointment of members to certain citizen boards, those being Commission on Human Relations, Justin Donaway, Megan Grode Wolters, Disability Awareness Commission, Joshua Reinfeld, Mechanical Board of Appeals and Examiners, Richard Bosol, Roger Nicholas, and Zoological Society of Sioux Falls Board of Directors, Tracy Dahl Webb. Okay, thank you very much. It does not appear that we have uh, anybody here today whose name was just called off, but I'd like to thank them for their uh, doing, performing their civic duty. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to address this? Councilors? Move motion? approval. Okay. Second, Erpenbach. Okay, motion's been made by Councilor Eric and seconded by Councilor Erpenbach. A roll call vote, please. Council members Starr? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Okay, item number 58. Item 58 is report of the April 26, 2018 notice of transfer of appropriations within major organizational units. Okay. Normally I'd say this is the point where we give away the car to the uh, Boy Scout that was here, but unfortunately he left early. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I, I would like to congratulate uh, last night's victors uh, for Mayor uh, Mr. Paul Tenaken and uh, Central District Mr. Kurt Sale. And prior to that, uh, Janet Brecky will be joining, uh, was elected three weeks ago, will be joining the council in a, a few weeks. And Councillor Erickson and myself uh, will be serving our second term as well, too. But I'd really like to welcome the new members to the Sioux Falls City Council. Do we have uh, any new business? Move adjourn. Second, Erpenbach. All in favor say aye. 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 This meeting's adjourned. Lean into the mic.